All right, let's do a news of the day type thing. We're going to have fun with it. So I'm wearing my red swords crossed Vegas hat with my red swords crossed Buffalo jersey, which the eagle-eyed viewer would say, hey, that wasn't in the countdown this year, and you're right. And I figured it out once the countdown was already underway, and I was like, crap, I didn't list it. So uh, I'm rewarding Buffalo fans by wearing it now and confusing them by wearing it with a Vegas hat, which has a similar style, and we'll get into styles in a second. Um, Carolina, team that also wears red and black. Uh, Aho's happy that the Canes matched, and he's been talking about the the whole process. He says he never spoke directly with Mark Bergevin. Basically, just a contract offer came in. He goes, yeah, I'll take it. And he just wanted it out of the way. And just think about this. Montreal saved Carolina from heartache. Aho would still not be signed. Aho would be one of the many that we're talking about as restricted free agents who are not likely to be in training camp on time so sebastian i was like i don't have to worry about this for five years i'm happy and he says he's very happy to be in carolina and i know montreal fans are um you know going to take issue with that here's here's the problem i have so bergevin comes out does this press conference says he's very excited to be a member of the montreal canadians and he's going to be a montreal canadian and we're really excited to have him here and yet they never had direct conversations so I'm, I'm going to, to lean towards what Aho is saying now and say he's likely telling the truth. I'm not saying that Bergevin was lying. I'm saying Bergevin was really pumping it up to crank up the pressure on Carolina with the idea of, hey, if I make it sound like he really doesn't want to be there and then they got to pay 20-some million dollars over 11 months to keep him, we got a better chance of getting him. It was a chess game that ultimately Bergevin lost, but Aho wins and kind of so does Carolina. They don't have to worry about it for five years. They're happy. Um, Buffalo. Uh, the funny thing is, Ristolainen comes out and goes, you know, I'd, I'd kind of like to go somewhere else. I'm going to be at somebody's training camp. Jason Botterill kind of says this is news to him, and Buffalo intends to keep Ristolainen around. And while they understand his comments and his frustration and that he wants to win, uh, they're apparently going to sit down and talk to him about how, hey, you're a Buffalo Sabre, uh, you're on a contract we like, you're a player we like, and we're going to keep you around. And when people talk about, oh, well, they've got too many right-hand defensemen, defensemen get hurt all the time in the nhl we've already seen in the case with calgary where we're not even in the season valamaki gets hurt in the offseason training and you can look and say geez you know maybe they wouldn't have bought out stone if they'd known that mel that the valamaki was going to get hurt you could never have too much depth in the nhl especially on defense uh, somebody will always be wanting defensemen so why not keep them around get through training camp and if it doesn't work then you look at trading him not before that um, I also wanted to talk about something I always find kind of odd this time of year. So you have Gay Pride Month that takes place. And the NHL, for for its part, does the whole um, inclusion, inclusive, and, and hockey is for everyone. And don't worry, I'm not going to preach. This isn't about preaching. Uh, promise. I promise. So Max Domi marches in the Pride Parade. And I'm just throwing him on the board because he's the one that was mentioned today. Um, the one thing that I'm, I'm waiting on is... Uh, for an actual player to come out and say, yeah, I'm I'm gay. Because I don't think, and this is the thing, you always hear players say, oh yeah, if somebody in our locker room came out, that'd be fine. If somebody in our locker room came out, it wouldn't cause problems. And yet nobody has. And I remember back in the 80s, there were two or three or four or five or maybe a dozen players there were rumors about. And I have no doubt that in at least, I would say at least a couple of those cases, probably true. But you, you can't in this 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 environment come out. And so um, I always find it unusual um, that, that the NHL does all this and says all this, and yet its own players. And we know there has to have been gay hockey players. There just has to have been. That has to have been a thing. And they can't. And they know they can't. They know they, they might be risking contract, endorsement, harassment, either by fans, by teammates. Um, and again, you know, it might just be gentle, uh, you know, ribbing kind of thing, but they just don't want anything to do with it. They just want to go out there and play hockey. So, um, well, I, 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 I'm not wrong with, I don't, I don't disagree with any of the messaging or, or the idea behind it. Um, I don't know. I don't know that we'll ever see a hockey player actually in the national hockey league come out and say, yeah, this is, this is who I am. I don't know that that's going to happen. So again, not preaching. Not saying anything about the moral or ethical or any of that stuff at all. Just saying I don't know that it necessarily happens. 
Uh, so let's get on to a, a lighter topic, which is jerseys and the whole jerseys leaking thing. So in the description for this video, I'm going to leak you guys to or link you guys to Aesthetics. I'm going to leak you their their URL. Um, so the third jersey from the Oilers has apparently leaked. But here's the interesting thing. It's the second leak I've seen this summer. They're both very, very similar, just the striping is different. Boston's third jersey has also apparently leaked, which leads me to ask, and I had this conversation with, uh, with Ben of Ben H Sports uh, via email the other day. And it's a question I've had, and it's a question he had. How many of these leaks might actually come directly from the team as in they say you know what the marketing department goes we have two or three different designs we're looking at we'll leak it to the public so by leaking it making it like it's this big private big deal you're more likely to have fans sharing it you're more likely to have reaction and you're not going to take that reaction directly as the team right away so you don't have to worry about posting it on instagram or twitter and fans i hate you i hate this you've taken away my will to live this is the worst jersey design i've ever seen um, you know, that whole thing uh, where fans really go ridiculous with it. They go absolutely ridiculous. When this came out, every, uh, most people hated this design when it came out, and now people would talk about it like it's just wonderful. So opinions will change. Um, so is this planned? Like when all these leaks are occurring at the same time, I go, you know what? Nobody's really losing their jobs through these jerseys leaking out. But is this a matter of this is a prototype, and the team goes, all right, prototype, all right, here you go. And so they, they, they hand it off knowing damn well it's going to get on the internet, knowing we're going to see it. And they're going, all right, we'll see what kind of reception this gets online. And maybe a site like Aesthetics is one that they're watching. And I'm going to link you guys to Aesthetics because they tend to get these first. So uh, I, I do wonder, like, how many of these these leaks that then turn out to not be true? Some of the, Sometimes you'll see them point, you go, oh, that's not exactly what was leaked. Maybe they took feedback from what they saw on these sites and they made minor tweaks to the jersey. Uh, the Oilers one, it looks like, and I've talked about this, it looks like it's going to be just the, the dark blue with an orange logo. Um, and again, it's on the Aesthetics page. Just click on the link below, you'll find it. Uh, I'm not a huge fan. going to be honest, not a huge fan. Uh, I think there's something really simple they could do to have an excellent third jersey and they're just not doing it. Uh, that being said... I think the Oilers will probably have new third jerseys regularly. Uh, Boston's new third is kind of meh, uh, to be honest. Again, it's just combining a few older designs into one brand new one with the idea of making sure that they part as many of us with our money as possible. So there you go. Uh, let me know what you guys think. And the other thing, too, is the fun thing that Aesthetics.com does is they have uh, people design jerseys that they send in. They go, hey, look at this design I made. Some of them are really ugly. Some of them are really funny. And some of them are actually way sharper than what NHL teams actually end up using. And I, it, it kind of lends itself to the idea that you could have a fan-designed third jersey that would look amazing. The problem is, if it's fan-designed, that fan's going to take... Uh, Part of the the monies from that and with the way that monies are distributed between the nhlpa and the nhl it might just be less of a headache not to do that unless you come up with some kind of a we'll give you ten thousand up front thanks for the design and now we'll make all the money off the sales something like that anyways there you go just some news of the day kind of stuff and just some some stuff that's been on my mind that i wanted to throw out there uh so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video Thank you guys so much for watching and for all your support, and I'll talk to you again soon.